Uh, I'd like to start by uh, congratulating the authors, uh, Dr. David Dige and uh, Mr. Dapua Kiyoshun, on the publication and presentation of this major contribution to uh, exist to the existing knowledge in oil and gas law, especially gas. I also want to say that uh, I think the book speaks very eloquently to the quality of uh, thoughts that's abundant across Nigeria. And this is an important point to make, especially because of the frequent criticism that there is a paucity of homegrown research and local knowledge production about the issues uh, that affect our own uh, country at different levels. So I believe that part of what we must continue to do and which is uh, particularly exciting uh, to see is that connection between expert knowledge, uh, policy making and implementation. And this I think would strengthen our publishing architecture and knowledge market. Congratulations again, uh, gentlemen, and thank you very much for your service in this regard. In recent months, natural gas has taken center stage in global politics, uh, geopolitics, especially with the war in Ukraine uh, going on. And uh, what it has done, I think, is that it has served as a poignant reminder to, all, to us all of the complex web of energy security concerns that nations and regions now face. As gas prices skyrocketed, countries were forced to confront the vulnerabilities of their own energy supply strategies, giving rise to urgent calls here and there for re-evaluation and diversification. The European Commission and the EU generally had proposed plans to reduce their region's dependence on Russian gas by at least two thirds by 2030. The US also supported its, uh, uh, the diversification efforts of its allies uh, as well as its own. And the US has also reduced very considerably its own reliance on importation of, uh, of gas, so in fact, of oil uh, generally with, uh, with uh, the shale oil. And they supported their allies by um, making additional exports of LNG to Europe. And they've signed recently deals with countries to develop new energy infrastructure and accelerated the development of renewal, renewable energy technologies also. Even Japan, an island with few uh, domestic energy resources, has increased its import of LNG from other countries such as the US and Australia so that it does not depend on any single source. It's also invested in the construction of offshore, uh, floating offshore wind farms, as well as promoting the use of solar. So the landscape of the global energy market is drastically being redrawn. The, quick, the key question, of course, for us is how does Nigeria respond? How do we position ourselves from the vantage point of a nation with abundant energy resources, working assiduously to diversify its energy resources, develop domestic resources, enhance energy efficiency, and strengthen our infrastructure. Our nation, like others around the world, finds itself suddenly in a situation where we must navigate this challenging transition wisely and with our economic future in clear perspective. So beyond the present risks of price volatility and geopolitical tensions, the reality of climate change and the increasing urgency for cleaner energy sources are also becoming apparent. For us uh, here in this part of the world, increased temperatures, changing precipitation patterns, more frequent extreme weather events are all having serious consequences for our ecosystems, for agriculture, for water resources, and of course for human beings across our country and especially the entire Sahel region. So the push to phase out fossil fuels quickly and discourage new investments in related projects is ramping up. And we must take these calls to action seriously, not just for the sake of our environment 
And, but also for our economy and for our people, it's important that we must emphasize that while climate change is an existential threat, our own energy poverty and our development is also a major threat. And so we must find a way of balancing both. Now, I think that this will involve a faithful implementation of our energy transition plan, which, you know, as some of us will know, involves the implementation of our decade of gas proposals. But we must also assure our compatriots in the Paris agreements and other agreements that the use of gas as a transition fuel will not significantly derail our commitment to carbon negative growth. Nigeria's energy transition plan attempts to chart a pathway forward because we see uh, solar and renewable energy as the bedrock of that plan. And the plan is to develop about 250 gigawatts of uh, solar power by 2060, which is when we intend to be uh, net zero. The plan also outlines our decarbonization strategies in the area of power, oil and gas and transportation, etc. But it also seeks to mitigate against the possible long-term job losses in oil and gas, in the oil and gas sector in particular, because this is an industry that has dominated our economy for decades. And if we're going to transition out of uh, fossil fuels, we must take into account the fact that there will be long-term uh, job losses. It recommends the role of gas as a transition fuel to balance uh, the large influxes of solar power on our grid. It's also cheaper and a relatively clean option for base load power for industry, especially as we expect and watch uh, the cost of solar batteries plunge. We've had to explain uh, to several of our compatriots in the Paris agreements, and by this I refer to the wealthier countries of the world, that no country has yet been known to develop its industry solely on renewable energy and that the call for us to do so solely on renewable energy is unreasonable. So there must be, uh, they, they must take into account the fact that we as a gas rich country require gas, not just for industry, but also to be, to even be able to effectively use solar power, especially on our grid. There are also practical ways, of course, uh, that gas helps, uh, uh, propane will bridge the gap, uh, for instance, uh, before the full use of renewables. In, uh, and this is practical. Propane is, uh, as we know, LPG and for those of us who have been, uh, for those who have been saying, we need to have uh, a change from deforestation caused by the use of firewood and all the dangers, not just to the climate, but to uh, families uh, who use firewood in the rural areas. And that we need to have uh, a clean alternative. LPG at least offers that alternative. It's not the cleanest, but at least it is so much better than, uh, than firewood and other fossil fuel options. So, that is also important for us, that we're able to use uh, LPG as a replacement for firewood. And that answers a lot of the questions around deforestation that we have. There are also, of course, many practical uses uh, of uh, gas for us. And we believe that this, that we must continue to pursue uh, the use of uh, fossil fuels, especially in this uh, transition phase. So the road ahead uh, is both challenging and full of promise. And we must embrace the opportunity to harness our vast uh, natural gas resources responsibly and judiciously, while simultaneously charting a path towards a cleaner and greener future. And we have the potential to become a global leader, not just uh, uh, in gas production, but also in, in, in the clean use of uh, in the clean use of gas and in renewable energy as we go into the future, already a lot of there's a lot of talk about uh, hydrogen, green hydrogen uh, in particular, which uh, well, of course you require uh, you require natural gas to produce, and there are huge investments that people are already making all over the world in hydrogen. 
So we as, ourselves as a nation ought to be thinking in terms of these uh, greener, uh, these greener gases. Um, I believe that uh, investments in hydrogen is something we should be taking, we should take seriously. I'm sure that uh, the um, group CEO of NMPC CL uh, will take that into account as we plan uh, for the future. So let me again commend uh, the authors of this book, Understanding Natural Gas, A Nigerian Perspective. Uh, this is an important book. And as has been pointed out, it's one of the few technical texts that has a strong policy and legal perspective and is also simple to read. Well done indeed. Uh, thank you all very much for listening.